right, guys. So here's what I came up with right now. Right now it looks like a mess. And um, I know I haven't uploaded a video on this in a while. But the thing that I ordered from China finally came in. All it was was an extended ribbon cable for the Blu-ray player. And I'll show you that on the other side. So up here we have the pump. Now I mounted the pump right up there as you can see. There's two screws here with a washer and then two screws back there with a washer as well. Another thing that you can see is that this pump is sticking past the glass where it's going to be going. So I'm just going to use these spacers. I'm not gonna, right now there's two of them on top of each other. I'm just going to be using one of them. So it's gonna the glass will stick about uh, three quarters away from the case itself. And this is going to be fine because I'm going to get some acrylic strips and then go on the sides of that so that it'll look like the case and maybe paint it red or just paint it white and with that acrylic strip on the front one I'm gonna leave some of it frosted so that the um, the LED light that allows you to know when the PS4 is on will illuminate and I'll also add a button there for the um, for the eject button for the blu-ray drive and I'll show you that next so turning around the case we have another mess but eventually it will be all cleaned up right here this is a 12 volt 5 amp um, power supply I'm using this to power the pump which is this cable here and I'm also using it to power the LED strip which goes up to here this is the box that controls it along with the IR blaster and to do that here is that the other end of that 12 volt um, power supply positive and negative right here that connects to there and then same with up here another set of positive and negative everything will just go into each other parallel and um, now that that's out of the way here's the blu-ray drive so as you can see with the blu-ray drive what I did I pretty much cut the whole section that holds the Blu-ray player in out of the PS4 casing itself screwed some holes through the case through the plastic and then on the other side there's nuts that holds the case in itself and then pretty much just got it as close as I can to the edge of the case as you can see right here and so far it's looking pretty good here are the extended uh, ribbon cables that I was waiting for. The ones that you saw in the last video, those weren't going to work because I found out that uh, these were flipped on the opposite side and they have to be the exact same on both sides in order for it to work. And um, yeah, so in order to power everything and make everything turn on, I pretty much just hacked this whole thing apart doesn't look too professional but it works there are other ways to do this like um, by using a relay switch and then connecting it to the motherboard on the PS4 by using the 12 volt I was gonna do that but I didn't want to touch any of the power off on the uh, PS4 Pro motherboard just in case so I decided to go this route so this is a smart switch they're $11 on Amazon normally there's the control and then like three um, switched ones so the control one will be the PS4 Pro. This that will connect right here, and then the uh, the switched ones. I ran this custom cable from it, and then it's going into this brick right here. That brick will power the the fans that's on the PS4 Pro. What's going on on there right now? And on this end, the um the 12 volt power supply will plug in right here and that will power the pump and the LEDs and as you can see right here on this power strip there is a switch so high medium low depending on how much power the PS4 Pro takes in from the outlet from the wall it'll pretty much tell the pump and the fans and the LEDs to all turn on with the, uh, the PS4 which is pretty cool. It's pretty much just a workaround from using a relay switch.
And one more thing that I did over here is I am utilizing the original switch that was on this case for the PS4. I'll show you an image right now of what um, the circuit of the switch used to look like for the power on one. And then here is what it sounds like. Well, it has a nice tactile feel. Not sure if you can hear that, but um, it works pretty nice. And then the ribbon cable that connects it is coming up. As you can see, that's that white cable right there. And it comes over to here, and it's going to exit out here and go into the motherboard. And for the eject button, I already talked about that. I'm going to frost a piece of acrylic and then make a custom button with that. Now here is one thing that I did for the power supply, which is right here. I took this, um, this power cable. This is pretty much the power cable that tells the PS4 to turn on when it's in, like, standby mode and everything. So what I did was... I cut all of this area and then extended the cable so that it can reach the motherboard because I have the power supply in a different spot and um, just use some heat shrink to cover up all the solder points that I did and now that's about like two feet long which is perfect and then where the main voltage from the power supply to the motherboard is I pretty much just cut these pins off that were on the motherboard that attached inside the power supply itself and these connectors that are in there I cut those off and then soldered on this nice um, 16 gauge wire to it so that I can transfer the power nice to the motherboard and yeah and then it comes over here I just gotta strip that and attach that to the motherboard when everything's all connected and then taking over the power supply all I did was this doesn't really look that professional but it's just for now the I cut this up this is pretty much just a power a PC power extension cord so that goes from there to here and then I'm gonna connect the original PS4 Pro's power cable to here so I can allow it for a quick disconnect if I ever have to detach anything and um yeah, and another thing, if you guys ever want to recreate this, I labeled the PS4 Pro's motherboard over here. Let me just flip this over. Right here. So if you're looking at the motherboard this way, so that the SATA and data power connector is right here. If you look right here, this is the LED where that light bar is when it lights up white or orange. Then up here, this connector, that's the power connector. Then this one, this is the eject button for the um, for the Blu-ray drive. And then all these other ribbon connectors here, here, and here. These ones are for um, the Blu-ray drive itself. And yeah, I also added these heat sinks on top of right here to allow for better cooling all right so the motherboard's mounted and all the ribbon cables are behind the motherboard i took this fan off so you can look underneath so i can show you what the ribbon cables look like as you can see they're slightly bent and on the other side they're also slightly bent that's the main blu-ray one right there it's the power and, um, yeah, this one is the eject button for the Blu-ray. This one is the LED, this little slightly bent one. This one is the power one. Now, if you're wondering if it's bad if the, um, ribbon cables are bent, well, I have this original one that was with the PS4, and it was bent at pretty tight angles, as you can see here, and it also overlapped. Now moving on to the other side of this, it looks like a mess right now. 
I mean, it's going to have to stay like this. But as you can see, I had to bend it slightly, especially here, because I had to bend it back this way. But everywhere where the ribbon cables overlapped, I put some electrical tape in between each layer, just in case. Because I'm just a little bit paranoid about that. Um, hopefully it works. I'm expecting it to. If it doesn't, then it'll suck. And um, for watching Blu-ray movies, I'll probably have to just get another Blu-ray player. And yeah, now that the ribbon cables are like this, now I can show you this SATA power data cable. Um, here it is right here. I just have it coming right from the hard drive through the slot. And then it comes over to here. Now I ran this through here before I put the motherboard in just to avoid any um, anything not fitting after. And here it looks like on this side. Just tucked it away over here. And then this will pretty much just go into that input right there. Now one more quick thing before I sign off on this video. I just want to show you guys what I'm going to be doing to hide all of these ugly cables and um, to cover up the power supply because I did decide to just keep the power supply in this area so I made this acrylic piece it has this cool picture of uh, Kratos the God of War logo and PS4 Pro and I also added this Noctua silent mini fan so that it will also cool the power supply because if you look at the power supply itself there are these vents that directly go behind this uh, fan and yeah this will pretty much just sit right here and everything lines up with the lines that's on the motherboard so when it's all together you'll be able to fully see exactly um, what the color scheme is supposed to look like now to cover um, the CPU area as you can see I already put it on there it's another acrylic plate is what it looks like with it off as you can see, it looks a lot better with this there. And then the next piece is another acrylic piece that will cover right here. So all you'll pretty much see is red and white, which is what I'm going for. Now, if you're wondering how I did this, uh, this Kratos logo and everything like that right there, all I did was get this temporary tattoo paper off of Amazon for, I think, like six bucks. And I printed it on my inkjet printer. Just make sure when you do print it, you print it in reverse. Because when uh, you transfer it to this, it'll be the opposite way. And, um, yeah, and then after, once you apply it to it, you just use warm water. And then it sticks. And then clear coat it. And it looks like this. So, yeah, I'm going to um, end the video here. And then the next video, I'll probably be wiring everything up like the power to the uh to right here and here and also maybe start bending the tubes there is one outlet right here and then maybe add some fittings to here and yeah all right before i continue with the project i just want to double check and make sure that this thing works so i have not turned it on yet this is going to be the first time um, yeah, so right now I just have the, the positive and negative right there hooked up to the terminal up here. And then this extension cable that I made from there to there that allows it to put the PS4 into rest mode. So, here it goes. It's crossing fingers. Made a beep. LED is lighting up. It's working.